70 days to go until the American people make the decision of the century. America or Trump? This is the warning. Speaking of Trump, with 70 days to go, he is running scared. In fact, you can see the yellow stripe, the stain, running down his back from outer space on a cloudy day. You see, Donald Trump, after all, doesn't want to debate, at least not anymore. He wants the microphones to be muted, or maybe it's unmuted. No matter what, he'll find something to complain and to whine about. Donald Trump first entered my consciousness when I was a boy in the 1980s, and he always reminded me of someone, a bully, a great character from one of the great 1980s movies, Scud Farkas from The Christmas Story. This has always been how I have perceived Trump. This exact face. Look at the two of them together. What a perfect match. Now, bullies have something in common. They are most always physical cowards and always moral cowards. Bullies punch down, never up. And Donald Trump has made a living for a lifetime out of punching down. Donald's problem is he doesn't like it when he gets hit back, punched back. He craters, he crumples into the ground. This man has the thinnest and frailest ego, maybe in history. Truly, it's remarkable. The most delicate flower in the world, as I've long said, is the male ego. And there is no flower in all the world more delicate than the Trump flower. Let's take a look at the insane tweeting, or whatever it's called now. Look at it all accumulate. What total madness. This man wants to be the commander in chief again, and he's afraid of Kamala Harris because he understands humiliation will be at hand. He is an unserious man who was called out in such a brutal manner at the DNC that his shame will not permit him to face the woman that shamed him. That's what cowardice is. Now, Trump is entering a period of self-sabotage because he's spinning. He's lost. The campaign, which was measuring drapes and predicting a landslide in the Atlantic magazine, is now losing by the widest margin sustained between opposing nominees in a very, very long time. Kamala Harris is poised to be president because the entire premise of the race has been inverted. Thank God. Whomever is going to lose is the person the race is about. And the race is fully, absolutely about Donald Trump the dominant cultural figure in the United States for the last 10 years, made so by the media. Donald Trump nullified in four years the Obama presidency. He undid the tradition of the peaceful transition of power, which is the bedrock of the American civilization. He has upended every conceivable norm as he desecrated his oath of office. What the country was saying was we did not want the choice between Biden and Trump. And now that that choice is completed, it's over. There is a way out to turn the page. There's nothing obscure about this. There's nothing contradictory about it. The only way to move forward in America to anything better is by making the race about change. And the change is turning the page from the person who has dominated CNN's coverage, whether he was a candidate for president, a defeated presidential candidate, an insurrectionist former president, a candidate for president, or the nominee again. It's the Trump show all the time. There's one issue in this election. Trump, should Kamala Harris even debate him? Who cares? In the end, he's an adjudicated rapist, and there is nothing, nothing to learn from him whatsoever. Donald Trump said, he would do the debate. And so the great complainer has taken after George Stephanopoulos yet again. The great conspiracy always aligned against him. Now come fully to ABC. Everybody, you see, is out to screw poor Donald. How can a country so strong, filled with so many tough people, 
have such a weak, whining man, petulant as our president? And the answer is we can't, which is why he's losing. And since he's losing, he's complaining. Here's how President Obama put it. And this is perfect because it sums up Trump as fantastically as he can be summed up. Here's a 78-year-old billionaire who has not stopped whining about his problems since he rode down his golden escalator nine years ago. It has been a constant stream of, of gripes and grievances that, that's actually been getting worse now that he's afraid of losing to Kamala. There's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. The great whiner, the great complainer, the weakest, most brittle crybaby in all the land. Is he going to debate? Who knows? Who cares about the drama? Kamala Harris should opt out of it. Say, I have a schedule to make. I'll debate you any place, any time. I need 48 hours notice, but I'm not interested in the drama because you're an unserious man. It's time for the Democrats to get very tough and to close out Trump, to corner him, to start pushing him off the edge of the map by seizing his issues, taking his space. Donald Trump is in big trouble. He knows it, the media knows it, and he's doing anything to throw something against the wall that might stick and help him get the ball back. Because the truth of the matter is he's been flat on his back since the moment President Biden got out of the race. Driving Joe Biden from the race in a debate doesn't get you anything in a presidential campaign. What it got was Kamala Harris is the nominee. What it earned Trump is defeat in November. Maybe that's why he doesn't want to do another debate, because he feels like no matter what happens in it, he can't win. And there's some truth to that, because he's the worst president in American history. He's an unfit man who broke his oath. And the American people, given all the facts, will use their judgment and end this Trump era this November, 70 days from now. And then Trump's MAGA movement, filled with extremists, filled with people who care more about their faction and more about that man than their country, will do everything they can to put that loser into power over the will of the American people. No, we won't permit it, but it won't stop them from trying. 70 days to go. What an exciting time to be alive. What a great time to be an American, because these are consequential times. These are days that matter. And you have an opportunity to do some things that matter, to volunteer to get involved, to make phone calls, to knock on doors, to spread the word, to be part of a cause bigger than yourself. Not every election and not every candidate represents fully in the way that Kamala Harris does the United States. But the Democratic Party, because it believes in the U.S. Constitution, it believes in our elections, it believes in liberty for our people, is the American Party in this election. Trump's Republican Party has become something hideous, and it must be burned to the ground in order for the green shoots to emerge so this country can once again have a decent conservatism that can be part of the competition of ideas between Americans working together to perfect our union. This is The Warning. I'm Steve Schmidt. This is The Warning. And I invite you to join, subscribe on our Substack, on our YouTube channel. Follow us. Welcome to the community.